Hi, what's up? Welcome back to the vlog. So today I am uh, actually up at Penland swimming pool in Swansea. I've just done a couple of one-to-ones. So those that don't know, I am a swimming coach part-time. Um, so just done a couple of one-to-ones and then I jumped in myself and just did 4K. Um, just a range of like aerobic, bit of pull, bit of uh, skill work. So really, really steady. Today's theme of the video is going to be a little bit of a kind of a builder on last week's video. So if you haven't seen my uh, bike spec video, go back and check that video out. I kind of go through what I was racing on last season and then kind of some of the little uh, little changes I'm hoping to make this season and then going forwards. Um, and then today I want to basically go through everything else bike related. So what shoes I'm wearing, what helmet I'm racing in, uh, what tri suit I'm going to be wearing. Um, those kind of things that kind of, I guess, I missed out from last video because it was all about the bike. So I just want to kind of add that level of depth in terms of the the bike leg. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll catch you back at home and we'll go through some of that stuff. Okay, so it's promised in the car. I just want to run through some of the other stuff I'm using on the bike so you guys kind of get the whole picture. So if you look at the last video, you've got the bike spec and then obviously the additionals that I'm going to be using on the bike. So you've got the overall bike picture and then I can hopefully show you guys what I'm doing for the swim and the run uh, in due course. I just think it'd be hopefully interesting for some of you. Um, I've got obviously some of the stuff that I've used um, and some of the stuff I'm going to use. So first off, oh, I've just been on there. Uh, they're set up still for the turbo. So I've been using the Mavic Elite Tri Shoes. They don't actually make these anymore. So I've had two sets of these in red. Um, the first kind of like tri shoe I really got that I kind of got along with. So I guess once you find something that works with you, um, just continue to use it. So that's what I was using last year. As you can see, cleats are pretty bashed up. Um, so I have a fresh pair in white, which look really nice because they're brand new, but I'm a bit worried what they're gonna look like after I've taken them out on the road a couple of times. So I've got a brand new set of them in a size 9.5. Um, I find they're quite narrow fitting and I've actually got quite wide feet, but um, hey, I think once I wear them in a few rides, they kind of mold really, really well to my foot size. It is a shame that they don't actually make these anymore. Um, but I managed to find this pair online on some European bike store. Garmin. So I got Garmin cleats with float. So I used the Garmin Vector uh, 3s, which I mentioned in the last video. Um, I use the cleats with a six degree float on them. No, re no reason behind that. I think there's arguments for saying that no float gives you better transfer of power, but these have always kind of worked for me. So. I will continue um, and I guess the biggest thing I've got to try and do now is firstly align the shoes um, and try and match up where the cleats are so I'm probably going to just sort of there's little markers if you can see them on the shoe um, where they sort of say zero minus one minus two one two um, so it's about aligning the cleats so that there's no change um, because obviously this position has been working for me um, so I'm going to obviously do the best I can to replicate that position uh, moving forward. So the shoes basically feel like no change at all. Um, so that's a job for later today. Uh, then on to other bits for the bike. So I've got a cask. So I started, when I started triathlon, I was just using a standard road helmet for the first couple of races I did. As I got a little bit better, I moved to a Bell Javelin. Um, I used that for 2019, so I used that at Ironman Wales. I used that at in 2020 at Outlaw X when there was the PTO supported race. Um, and then more recently, I've moved to the Cask Menstrual. Um, and actually, the reason I moved to this helmet was when I went to the wind tunnel with Drag to Zero, I tested about. Um, I think about five, five helmets. Um, and all of the helmets kind of gave me really similar data. So Bell Javelin, the Giro Era Head, um, what else did I try? The Endura, the uh, Met something. Um, and basically all of those will get basically give me identical data saying that they all kind of worked for me. And then I put this helmet on 
Um, and instantly, Simon came and just said, that has basically made you like, I think it was five to six watts quicker um, and dropped my CDA by quite a significant amount. Um, so it's crazy to think how much like a, a good fitting helmet to your position is. And that was basically just because that this uh, tail sat onto my back really, really nicely. Whereas the bell javelin, I tended, I tended to find that the longer tail sometimes would stick up slightly or I'd have to lift my head more. So it just didn't really have that connection. Um, so therefore the aerodynamics are basically not great. So yeah, this is the habit I'm gonna be using. Um, unless I do any more aero testing and find a better alternative. But yeah, it's a really nice helmet. I think I purchased it for about 260 quid. Um, beginning of last season, um, I found it on sale, I think, on something like Sigma Sports or something like that. But yeah, it's done me well for the last year. Um, and I probably will, the only thing I'll probably do this year is this visor is pretty bashed up and wrecked. So I might get a new visor, clear one, um, but also a alternative with a mirror. So I, in Salou last year, was a bit sunny and I found that a little bit of a visor would have been a lot better. Um, finally, I need to get it actually, one second. <laughs> finally, the number belt I've been using is the no pins uh, pouch. So it's really, this has really, really worked for me. So it's really simple. You just open up, you pop the number in. There's no pins as the name. Um, and I find that when you're on the bike, this sits really, really nicely on your back and your backside. Super aero, there's no like clips or anything. So in terms of like round my waist, it holds really, really steady. That's worked really well for me. I do find on the run though, it is a little bit uncomfortable. So I've played around with like where I have it. I find that sometimes if it goes too high up my waist, it kind of like waves around. I pushed it down over my bum before, but you know, it, it's difficult to find the correct position with that on the run. Um, on Outlaw Full actually, I wore this on the bike and actually switched to a different number belt for the run section. One of the reasons for that is the other option had some spaces to hold gels, so I basically didn't have to carry on my gels. So, number belt. The final thing that I wanted to talk about, but I haven't got yet, is my race suit for this season. So, some of you may have seen my racing suit from last season, was a Santini Viper, which I'll put a picture one side of me. Um, awesome suit, uh, super quick, tested really well in the wind tunnel. Um, I think overall, like, it was a, one of the quickest suits you can get. You've obviously got big athletes like Gustav Eden, um, Ben Knut, uh, female side, you've got Emma Pallon. There's so, to be fair, there's so many athletes who are using Santini now, which kind of show how good a suit it really is. The negatives I found with that suit was it did give me a little bit of chafing um, on the lower leg. Um, nothing drastic, but enough that it was obviously after each race, I would have some discomfort for a few days after. Um, what I'm going to do this year, based on, again, racing with uh, Drag to Zero, is I'm going to be using the Endura uh, Drag to Zero suit. Um, again, I'll put a little bit of information up about the website there. This suit is super quick. Um, it was, I think it was banned by the UCI because it was too quick, um, which kind of just says what it is. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, I think that's coming in three weeks time. And as soon as I got that, that suit out, I'll either do a video on it or I'll put it up on my social media. Um, but yeah, super excited to wear that suit. I know it tests super quick in the wind tunnel. Um, and also the design, the thing, the custom design that like Endura, uh, Santini, No Pins, you know, all those sort of companies can do in terms of individualizing your suit is pretty awesome. So watch this space. It's gonna be similar to last year's design in terms of like the theme of it, but there's some big changes and big differences, which I think look really, really exciting. So. Yeah, hopefully this video has not been uh, too dissimilar from last week's. So a little bit of a like on spec in terms of like what I actually use. Um, these fresh shoes do look really, really nice. I can't wait to get them out. I think I'm going to wait until I'm in Lanzarote in beginning of March um, to get them out of the the, uh, the bag. But what I will be doing is setting up the new cleats on them um, and possibly just testing them on the turbo to see how they feel. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.